they could still stand up like that. Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. We, we already talked about this, though, you know what I mean? It's like, why are we revisiting the same evidence? Why... Celeste, you forgot? You asleep? playing Emily wants to play too Ooh, like what was we thinking with that shit this 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 with splish what good yo welcome back hey, to some more dangin dangin robo <laughs> Let me get it started. Get it started. Chapter three, pre, pre. pre <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. For those of so, who are new, your votes will determine the results. Okay. If you can figure out who done it, okay. then only they will receive punishment. Then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. Okay, we knew that, we knew that, we knew that. We already know who did it. There we go. Damn, Hannah, you... Where are you? Where was you at in high school? I'm just saying, let me chill though, you know? Because that still might be taken the wrong way. I'm just saying, when I was her age, I would have loved to know her. Was that? Was that? Zero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place. And we found him in that suit. Big facts. Why is it Don't on try and deny it. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Damn. Who are you calling a murderer? Mm, point. I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Mm. Blueprints for the suit. Mm. Parts we assume were used to build it. Mm. And all of it was found in your room. Yep. You have to admit. The evidence is quite compelling. I'm just saying, it's quite it compelling. It to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it. This could be anybody right now. These are my bullets, Robo Justice, Hero's Message, Robo Justice Blueprints. Let's see what they're talking about. Let's get it. Everything Six minutes. Everything found in your room. Yep. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. Okay. I, I, I don't know anything about that. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill? No! Just hold on a second. Compelling evidence that Hero is the killer. So maybe something wasn't found in his Everything room. We found in your how, how do I switch my bullets the, up? The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. We didn't find the costume in his room, though. I, I, I don't know what it's not true. It's a hero. What? No, just hold on a second. Right? We didn't find the costume in his room. Everything we found a blueprint. in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I'm finna lose true. and this is the first Hero, bullet. No, 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 I got it, 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 I got it. Everything we found in your room. Hero's message, the blueprints, and the costume. Everything we found in your room. Hold up though, hold up though. Let me think about this. What do we find in his room? A box with the costume. The, the blueprints. We didn't find the message in his room, so let's try that. Found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, 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 it's not true. It's Hero, why? No! Just hold on a second! We found the note on Hero, okay? So let's, let's just see. Everything found in your room. Shoot! Okay, so that's how the you slow. There the you go. Suit part, they are all proof enough. No, that's wrong. Let's go. Talk your shit, Mikado. That's what I needed right there. 
Just my just my little e-file. So I can read my sure notes. Hero really made those there we go. Talk your shit, Mikado. What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. Uh -huh. It's the note that Hero wrote. Asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. Uh -huh. The handwriting's obviously different. Wouldn't you say? Of course. When you compare it to the blueprints. There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro's innocent as well. Mm, okay, Kuya. What? Speak up then. Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course he passes it off to me. So? Who was in the robo-justice suit? The suspicious individual in question, the one that must have been in the suit, Hina Hiro. The Illuminati? What? That's right! They're all working behind the scenes to try and set me up! Those dudes are super scary for serious! They really put the Illuminati Shit. in the game? Fuck. Hina? They really want me to, to question Hina? Why me? That costume was super big on me. No way I could walk around in that thing. You saw me trying off for yourself, Mikado. Shoot. Why would he say that it's not him and then pass it back on and say that it was him again? So it's Hero then. I got it. Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Okay. Don't do Obviously, me like that. He was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. <laughs> I'm like, it makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. Okay, so you playing mind so games. What you're saying is that's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the Robo Justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Bruh, Kuya character hey, is like... trying to boss us around! Ku Kuya character? He kinda cool. He may be like on bull most times, but... I don't know, he kinda cool. All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. Okay. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Absolutely. A dolly? Oh, there was a blue tarp. I got it! There's still one more thing. The, the thing that we're used to move Taka's body, they must have been, it was a tarp. And, um, I think the dolly was used for what's his name, right? Maybe it was for both? I got it! Yeah, it must have been both of them. They were a dolly and a tarp, right? It's with the attitude. So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. Okay. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Mm. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Okay. Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. 
But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. <laughs> it's early morning, Joel. Sorry for yawning so much, you know? Just woke up. <laughs> in other words, you think they use the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Why, Celeste? Why do you even say shit like that? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Okay... Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along? And you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? Why am I the one being pressed, though? Why isn't Hero answering some of this? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. Oh, f*** you, robot. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Celeste, what are you on right now? Talk to Hero about this. Don't smile in my face. You big... Slink haired bitch? Wow, I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean, but maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository. A new element has been added to the bullet time battles. Yeah, I need to know. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're gonna add one more ingredient to the recipe. You're gonna add another one in the next trial. Don't try and play me. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking on and pressing the triangle button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the square button. Just like locking on, you have to press the square button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that the square button now is a function along with the X and square button. What? You will automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, but if your action is different, go through your set the gentle. In which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck and just have fun. My shit is not sent to gentle ever in any video game. Don't ever disrespect me like that. So we finna just gear straight to the battle like this. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Do your worst. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Bro, I forgot how to play this shit. Hold up. Let me reload. Nice Let me reload. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. I couldn't find a tempo in that. I couldn't find a tempo. It was hard for me to find the tempo in that one. Why are we already bullet time battling though? That's the part I don't understand. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot so agree. Everything, everything you is are rhythm. Fool. Do your worst. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. I Lies can't hear it. You nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. I'm like, kill her. I cannot agree. Shut up. This should prove it. I got it. What's up, Celeste? 
What's up, Celeste? I didn't know it was gonna be you, but but talk your shit, Mikado. If you're asking for proof that the doll Okay, before you give your proof, Mikado, I just wanna put this on record. Why did Celeste just jump out the woodwork? Nobody was even blaming her for anything. And then she jump out and start insulting me, get caught in, in, in my crossfire of information and evidence, and then we immediately go to a bullet time battle? Is the case over with? Is this the fastest case in the game? Am I am I tripping or, or like did Celeste just ask for this? Who cares? Kill her. Who cares? I have it right here. You got proof, Mikado? Let's hear it. When I found the dolly in the repository, uh -huh. one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. What's up? The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident. As they wheeled the body out of the room, mm -hmm. and as the blood dried on the tire, mm -hmm. they moved the body into the repository. Done. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Done. <laughs> yes. Yeah, stu Shut your stupid ass up, robot. Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that much? That's what I'm saying. Same thing I'm saying, Mikado. We in the same boat. Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Okay. Yeah. The subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Okay. If I look at how the body was moved, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? I already know why. I already know. It's, it's the 90 degree angle in the uh, in the legs, I think. The costume. It's the costume. Or it could be the blueprints. As I'm we have... know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. Okay. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. The culprit wrapped the body in the tarp. Okay. Then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Sure. Now... Keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Okay. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. There you go. No, that's wrong. Nigga! I know what I'm doing. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. I know what I'm doing, y'all. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Talk your shit, Mikado. Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I know what I'm doing! Finally, right? I know, I'm thinking the same. I know you're in the comments like, Really, this is the one time that you finally guessed right in this whole series. Be on my side for once. Damn. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the way. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. Okay, yeah, we knew that. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well... What's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? Celeste, what are you on? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. <laughs> yeah, I do it. <laughs> on top of that, Her if voice. you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... Isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? Okay, okay, fair point. There's absolutely no chance that the costume's taken off because you can't take it off by yourself. Oh my God! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... We remember, Mikado. It's the back. I remember the clasp on the back. You can't get. That's true. Can't get off. Seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then, you really can't take it off by yourself. Hero wasn't just making it up. Uh, of course, I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. 
Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that Robo-Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? It's big facts in front of everybody's face. Put your titties down. Why you gotta push them up like that in a class trial? Have some respect. To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been <laughs> Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? Celeste, you are on bull this episode. You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? What'd he say? How did you get hurt? That guy hit me! What guy? Robo Justice! Er, that's what I decided to call him just now! So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. <laughs> Hold on a second! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. That's what I'm saying. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? I agree. I agree with Instead that. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Mm, message. Perhaps. But where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. Okay. We can go through the whole process. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! It's low-key what I'm thinking too, but we gotta get to the truth, right? I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. Alright then, let's take another look back at what happened. Okay, Scarra, let's do this. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Why were you blocking the stairs? And then... That sounds like a pterodactyl. That does not sound like a Fumi dying. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. While Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. 
When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi dead. Look at his little feet and that big body. I'm just... Something, something was finna give, bruh. The ankle was finna go out. The knees was finna, was finna burst inside this itself. I... He went out like a warrior, though. Rest in peace, Fumi. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. When I first heard that Taka had died, I really didn't care. I don't even think I showed emotion for Taka death. I mean, Taka death is sad, but like... When he was acting all crazy over Mondo, I get that they was boys, like they had their moment in the sauna, pause. But it's like, I don't know, ever since he started acting crazy over Mondo and couldn't see past Mondo being Mondo, it just kind of like, I just didn't care for him any mu as much anymore. Ifumi always been kind of like a real one though, like he, he always been about his 2D and, uh, you know, his, 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 uh, his art. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository, which is where we rediscovered the corpses. Look at Celeste, like... I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well... If that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. Okay. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. The contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them, no matter what. Hmm. What is Monokuma File 3? The victims were Fumi and Taka. Causes of death for each was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. When they were first running the nurse's office, Fumi's glasses had blood. When they were in the repository, they were clean. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. Hmm, okay, so let's try the so, broken wristwatch. Regarding Taka, I wonder if he or perhaps it was at We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the justice hammers. It's true that he fooled. How, how do you get rid of the purple words? Okay, so that must be white noise. You targeted and pushed X. Hammer three. 
while Taka's death came from a sw See? So it's obvious Taka came. We already know what order so, because of the numbering. Taka's death. I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. That wasn't it. Okay, okay. Regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. No, that's wrong. Ha ha ha! Give me that! Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. Good, let's go. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, mm -hmm. but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Yep. Okay then, let's see the proof. Uh, the proof is in the wrist though! The proof is in the wrist though! I got the proof on me! Come on, Mikado. Hangman's Gambit? What the fuck is this? Move, move, move. Move, move. 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 Move, move. Move, move, move. Move. Give me that! I'm here! Now I understand! These mini games is hilarious a little bit. Come on, come on. I got it! Taka's wristwatch! That's See? what I was trying to get Look. to. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. So if it wasn't broken after six last night, then he must have been attacked around six this morning. Mm -hmm. And that would be his official time of death. Mm -hmm. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. Absolutely he was. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around seven. Uh -huh. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. Absolutely. That simple fact slipped past all of us. It didn't slip past me. I just couldn't figure out how to prove it to y'all. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit put the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Mmm, now Taka was cut around six. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. Everybody right back on a chopping block, I love that it. may be true in the case of Taka's murder. Sure. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. <laughs> Sakira, like, don't involve me with this bullshit. Uh, no, I feel you, Sakira, but at the same time, like, Taka's still dead, so, you know, there's two deaths. So let's, let's, let's put you right back next to us. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. We're not done with Taka yet. Okay, sure, when sure. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Facts. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Genocide, you was knocked out sleep. Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Don't Come on, here, making up. stuff up. What anyway, are y'all doing? We all have rock solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? 
Correct. And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Hmm. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. We know, we know. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. True. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the... Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? Speak up. For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. Okay, I'm with that. In I'm particular, that. I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. Okay. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumu's, Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? It would seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh, man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well... What if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? I would tell you to share it with the group so we can move on. You! What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. So... You and Hero must have been smoking some good shit because I don't know what the f*** you talking about with that. If the dead body were to move itself, I'd just be playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies mode. What are you talking about? The, the dead body m m moved on its own? <laughs> no, not another ghost. I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is it wasn't really dead. We thought Hifumi was dead. But perhaps in reality, he was still alive. That's fair, because he did wake up. He was alive? He woke up when you when you cried all on his face. Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? I never thought about that, but okay. But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That it isn't possible. Look at Celeste. It's you, bitch. The idea that Ifumi was still alive. Is it really possible? He woke up and talked to y'all before he passed. Of course it is. None of that matters. None of that matters. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else. I didn't mean discovery. to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, got, I got another idea. I got another idea. I got another idea. Are you saying that when we first there's a chance? I feel like this no. is a lot easier Hifumi than I'm making it. And you know that surely you heard the body to keep from dead, and that is are we really maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Are you saying that when we first there's a chance he was actually still No. Hifumi was dead, and you know that surely you heard right the body discovery announcement, a lot Hifumi's dead body had been found. Knew it. No, I knew it! Won. I knew it! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then we just gotta provide evidence to, to back up Is our contradictory claims. the announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. 
But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. Facts. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. <sighs> but what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Okay, never mind. That was the wrong one. That's what I was thinking, though. Okay. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Oh my gosh. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. Mm. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. We knew that, though. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. His glasses. Oh, I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! But a big bada boom! No. That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was oh, still alive. You'd be surprised. Okay, then. Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Look at her. You know you did it, bitch. There has to be proof that shows if was still alive. I have to find it and show everyone. It's the fact that when we found him the second time after the nurse's office, his glasses were wiped away. He was trying to see so he could walk up in her. Yeah, give me the glasses. Give me the glasses. Give me the glasses. Give me the glasses. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body, and then, from his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the rep But when you compare his body before being moved, and his body after, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Oh, stop it. Take this. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. I got it. Talk your shit. In this right. Th this trial kind of easy though like this trial is kind of easy I don't know what we was on last time, but this one I'm kind of getting the hang of things There was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository His glasses that fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in I'm sure when we found Hifumi in the nurse's office his glasses were covered with blood but when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. Oh, he was still trying to be clean with it. Respectable, Ifumi. The evidence I found in the trash can in the nurse's office was... I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And whose is this? And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? That Celeste has? And whose digital camera was it? 
Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. What? I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. Damn! A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Hmm. Hmm. So, what you're saying is... What exactly? I'm blown. What I'm Got saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? Facts. That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? I definitely say. But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... <laughs> What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. Wow. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere. Now, Fumi, that's nasty, bro. But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. God, what an idiot. And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! Wow. It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. Mm -hmm. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? Shut up, alarm clock. Mm. So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. Wow. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. Hmm. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Damn, Hifumi. Don't go out like Mondo did, bro. We have no respect but for Mondo over that here. That means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Yeah. There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? The note! I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Stuffed deep in his pants. Uh, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Why was she happy yes. about that? Pants? pants? Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. 6 a.m.? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Somebody was just planning on killing people one by Let's one, see. different times. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. <sighs> and that person could only have been... I got it! That's right! 
Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? Yes. So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! No, it's ripped up, though. Um, just to We know. Yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. It was the ripped up letter, y'all. Mikado, if you don't take out that ripped up, okay. Golly, there's a lot of bullets. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Hubby. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! The time mentioned in the note, I feel like that's the key. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for... must have been Hoppy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? I'm glad I missed. That was not the right one. 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. So... Hubby had the note, right? Hmm. Then the person it was intended for... must have been Hubby! No. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! No, that's wrong! Did not think I was gonna get it that fast. Wow. I'm impressed with no, myself. There absolutely is a connection. What? What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m which is the same time Taka was murdered. Fact. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. Mm. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Damn. Mm. Well, when you put it like that... Put that tongue back in your mouth, unless you're trying to... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick <laughs> Taka. Just the same as me. Yep. The culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. Foul. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuff down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. The rip. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip. Leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Hifumi, what are you doing out here, bro? You going out bad, bro. You over here looking more and more like a real deserving member of the underworld. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! 
Shut up. Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Man, come on with all this. When they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. What's that, bro? And what might that be? What you talking, bro? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! Okay. The weapon? Yeah. Because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, mm -hmm. the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. Come on. He's right though. What all that? I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. Of course you don't. You murdered it. You know exactly, you don't need the clue, you have the fact. I'm like... So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow, I have to find the truth. Oh my gosh, these bullet time battles be... Whew. I don't think this is even called a bullet time battle. The spotless hammer. That's gotta be it. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer... Well, whatever it is, there's one thing. How was the culprit able to move around? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 was about to be! Check out MurderGear.com slash Hammer Time for... Well, one thing's... The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammer... No, that's wrong. I'm doing my thing right now, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just doing me. I'm the just doing me. The murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No. It was something completely different. But, seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Mm. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. Makata, look at your face bouncing around. Are you good? Are you nervous? You don't really believe what you're saying? What's going on with you? But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis. Man, come on. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. 
I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. Of course you do. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? It wouldn't be ludicrous if you lied to them, Celeste. We did talk about how they wouldn't. there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but... How about the money incentive placed in front of our faces? Okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one, only the one who actually, assuming the rule holds true. That is. But that only really applies. In this case, however, there were two murders. I didn't even mean to shoot that off. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to Based snack that rules, up. Even if Snatch more than that one, up, I mean. the one who actually, assuming the rule holds true. That is. But that only really applies. In this case, however, there were two murders. Impossible is out the window then. Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one person, only the one who actually carried out the act, assuming the rule holds true. It is... No, that's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward <laughs> benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. Mm. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. Yeah, I know what the reward is. It's the money that Monokuma put out in front of everybody. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer Oh, okay. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. Damn, that's okay. That's even better deal than the money. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. Hifumi, you turn out to be a real bitch, bro. I thought she was kind of cool. You make me want to stop they dancing. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. Wow. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies, by creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. Trash as f The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Absolutely. Th that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. I was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed that from the fact from the very beginning. Which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidences. Kyoko really is amazing. Although... When you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like, it's almost unnatural how good she is I at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Let's not even, let's not even waste no time, bruh. 
Look at her. She she never wanna look. Kuya don't give a fuck. He be like, I dare you to try me. I'll fuck your life up. But now Celeste, Celeste, it's her. It's her. We already know what it is. Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? Absolutely. <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying then? is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. Oh, brother. That I would go within 10 feet of that shit for brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot. Uh, uh, ah, uh, pardonnez-moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Get her ass, Kuya. Get her ass. Is that so? Get her ass. It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. He would love to do whatever she said. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. And he was afraid of her. What it, what it is that only Afumi and Celeste had in common. Hmm. Behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. These niggas frame that picture. Oh wow! Shush. The adults are talking now. Yo, hold up. Bitch. Don't ever disrespect me like that in front of my peers. I'll slap the shit out of you. I'll see you in your dorm, 6 p.m. Actually, I'll see you 8 p.m. after nighttime is done. One on one, fight me. Sorry. Don't apologize. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? <laughs> We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed <laughs> to have seen. Look at her now. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? <laughs> Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Is that Godzilla? It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Sorry, y'all. Then why don't we split into two groups? Shut up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. Look at her, it's stupid, dumb, quiet. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. Ha -ha! That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. Why are you sweating so much though? Be, be confident in your speech. I, I don't believe it. Everything. The whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. 
I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. This girl is nuts. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, what is it? What is it, Kuya? Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but... Looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're going to die, just like those guys did. I remember her saying that too, but... I don't understand what's so strange about it. Me neither. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Mm. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was mm. completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. She the spy. She working with those guys. Or uh, she working with they. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? Ugh, Kuya, bit foul with if it. If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Kuya said the Celeste comments doesn't make sense, but what is he alluding to? He's alluding to the fact that somebody is a spy. And it's Celeste. E handbook? Uh, let, let, let's just see. Let's just hear it out. All I said was, we must really be enjoying, enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? What is, the, what is the E, e file? I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Shoot! The all contradiction said, is she must shouldn't- really enjoying the sight of us. They must be positive. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just- And that is- And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? The those guys part. All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be positive. We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just like... No, that's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Mm. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. Mm. So how did you know, Celeste? Mm. How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. Ooh. <laughs> 
What? You all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? She is not going down. Just admit it, bitch. Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? Yeah, who is in there, though? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. Of course there's not. Other explanations. If it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away, the only possibility is... I got it! It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. I gotta see that picture again. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. Hifumi put this dude, Hiro, in the closet. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. Th that's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Just, just, we already voted, uh, Monokuma. Can you wrap this up, please? We know who did it. She's just over here saying, that is impossible, that is impossible. She having a virus glitch. Monokuma, stop her. Delete her file. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. She get disrespectful when she get pressed into a corner. Celeste thinks she can prove that there's no way if was dragging the suspect away. But is that really possible? Okay. I'm gonna try the blueprints first. I'm gonna just have him load it up. me up in that suit after I passed out! Th then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight! You tried to make me look like the bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all! No way! You dressed me up in that suit, then you just draped me- You tried to make me look like- Like I said, as you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfect if the person inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after- No way! You dressed me up in that suit, then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him- You tried to make me look like the bad guy- Like I said, as you can see in the picture, the suspect, if the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all! No way!
I'm gonna try and shoot the blueprints me up at... Now. Then you just drape me... You tried to make me look like I'm what Celeste is talking about. In the picture, if the person in... There's no way they could stand up straight like that. Okay. Shoot! You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Th then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look... Like I said, as you can see in the picture. The suspect, if the person in there's no way they could stand up straight. No, that's wrong. Didn't we already talk about her not being able to bend at the waist, though? I mean, the costume not being able to bend at the waist? No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. We, we already talked about this, though, you know what I mean? It's like, why are we revisiting the same evidence? Why... Celeste, you forgot? You asleep? Malfunction? Glitch? That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <laughs> Thank you. Start, start... Fucking caving. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> there you go. Well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Big checkmate. Checkmate? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going with it? What you doing? <laughs> she got going on. She got going Don't on. make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? C Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. What's going on with you? Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Hey, Hifumi, who was it who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? He, he, he put Yashihiro name out there. He did. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. Yasuhiro, sure. In other words, Yasuhiro Hagakure! Wait, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. What? He did say Yasuhiro. But are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? He didn't give me no nickname. No, 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 I, 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 I meant to put the third Think one on. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Nayagi? Exactly. <laughs> I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. What is Celeste's last name? Indecent? Don't talk. <clears throat> Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. You don't know that, Sakura. No. no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <laughs> what did you just say? Ask Monokuma, she's not gonna tell us. To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well... Do I? You look like a fucking wombat right now. Look at them eyeballs. You look like a crab. Mr. Crab's daughter. Uh, not the whale. The real one. <gasps> what? I think I've earned the right 
to be a little on edge. I don't know. She looks like some kind of sea creature, though. It might not be Mr. Krabs, but it's... I don't know. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Like a raccoon, a little bit. Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Celeste still won't give up. So then, I have to do something to make her accept it. One on one? Okay, more arguments. This is the hardest part about this whole game, these arguments right here. Okay, let me look for contradictions. Hifumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have- It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't- How many times do I have my name? Celeste, you loaded for God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's- And since you have no way to contradict me, that's the only truth there is! Moron! The handbook. The handbook. If Fumi was trying to tell us something, he wanted us to know the killer. If there's one person, it would have to be you, Celeste. How many times I? Celeste, you loaded for... How long do you plan to go? I'm not pretending, and since you have no way to contradict me. No, this won't. Come on, come on. Come on, it's over. Give it a rest. Put it to bed. That's no it. No Jay Holiday. The handbook. What? Yeah, come on. Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Yes, it does. Monokuma, let me see her shit. Okay, we know, we know. Let's so get there, though. all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. Fact. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Monokuma, can Celeste, you get involved? Can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Uh-oh, we broke her down. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Manakuma, malfunction! Malfunction! Until the game's over, you never know what might happen! Fine then. Let me settle it. Oh. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. Oh no. And that'll bring everything to an end. I forgot about this part of the case file. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Okay, so Celeste talked to Hifumi. What? That looked like a kick, though. His face looked like he just ate a smooth kick. Um. It kind of looked like that more, more realistically than the other one. Act two. That's when Hero walk up inside. So we're reading this from right to left, right? Walk in, sees each other. What the f is that face, though? Okay, maybe Monokuma handed him this. Robo Justice Hammer number one, maybe? He wasn't bleeding, though. I'm, I'm gonna just start putting shit on here. Hopefully it just, it just, it just gets to working.
Yo, what up, y'all? So I know y'all probably like, what the hell are we doing in this dude car right now? Uh, you driving with me? You know, just left the barber shop. <laughs> okay, so uh, my files corrupted towards the end of the dangin upload for some reason, or the dangin you know recording for some reason. Uh, vocals stopped. I accidentally quit out of the trial, so I have to start the whole fucking trial over again. Which I'll do off stream, and then I'll get us right back to the closing argument part. Um, next episode that you see, I'm gonna have the, the the trial over with, and then we're gonna get into like a little bit of the filler, cause you know it goes trial, close, trial, Monokuma kills, filler, uh, somebody kills, and then we gotta do investigation. So I'll probably play a little bit of that filler after we close the trial out. Again, I love each and every one of you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up on it. I truly appreciate it. It's a little bit different though. How y'all feel about vlogs, bruh? Huh? Vlogs? You said never. Okay, you got it. I'm like, okay, no, I'm just playing. Love each and every one of y'all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Well, you can't do drive-by. Yeah, I can do it too. I can do it too.